Okay, uh, topics. I, um, I probably have a, a, a short topic for today uh, to maybe chat about some of the breakthrough that we have on our um, effort to try to solve this unboxing for software. Uh, that so sounds, that, which yeah. I think is relevant for for the work that you're doing as well. Sure, especially a breakthrough. That's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started with that? Okay. Uh, let me see. If I have Someone from our side here. Manuel is here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so remember what, what we showed you well, a few weeks ago, I think a couple, a couple of months ago or a month ago or so, where we were trying to use the, the realms and membrane around it to be able to sandbox and preserve the identity discontinuity. Um, so we have continued working on that. And there are a couple of things that I believe are relevant to share. Um, the first one is a, a solution that we found for the problems of using an iframe as the source of the intrinsics. So when in, even in the realm team, we were creating an iframe and taking the intrinsics out of that iframe. Yeah. Um, but the iframe uh, continues to be hanging there in the page. Um, you have to keep it connected in order to be able to use those intrinsics. And, um, and the eval of, of that uh, iframe, which is one of the intrinsics, um, uh, allow you to, to attempt to do some operations that will go and hit the network, like a, a, a dynamic import, for example. When you try to call import there, it will, if, if you bypass the re regular expression, it hits the network. Mm -hmm. um, so that becomes a problem for the realm team. And so we pretty much wanted to solve that problem. Uh, the breakthrough on our end uh, was that um, there are certain configurations that you, we have been trying to, um, let me give you a little bit more background. Additionally, there are other problems with the iframe. Um, like for example, the iframe is always connected to the pattern by using the global binding um, um, top and some other bindings that are not configurable and you will not be able to eliminate them. So the only way to do that is by using the width with the proxy, at least preventing access to that thing. So otherwise, people will be able to walk out of the iframe itself. Um, yeah, I was, I was wondering about that, because earlier I thought you had said you were not planning to use the eight magic lines, but you were yeah, we, we will not. We will not, we, do, we, we will not be using that, that's for sure. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, 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 so the, I believe the breakthrough on our end has been the possibility to create an iframe and disconnect the iframe and it still be able to use the intrinsic. And, and that comes with some flavor. Um, the, the fact that the iframe, when it is disconnected, any host operation is automatically uh, cut out. They do not work. Wow. So if you create the iframe, you disconnect it and you attempt to evaluate some coding to that uh, iframe via the intrinsic, the eval intrinsic, um, you do import, dynamic import, the iframe will tell you that it cannot perform that operation on a disconnected document. Uh, that is, is that, that's cross-browser? Yes, that is cross-browser, works fine everywhere. The, huh? the error is the exact same error. And there are many other operations that involve the host trying to do some validation that automatically get uh, um, disabled because you cannot do those operations it will throw. 
So even wow. if you punch through something and you get access to something that you should not have access to and you try to go and make a request using the dynamic import or any other thing, it will just simply fail. So you, you eliminate a complete class of problems of getting this to talk to the network because there is no network because it's not attached to anything. Yeah. Um, the only possibility, the, the only problem with that approach today is that Chrome has a bug. Um, the latest Chrome has a bug that do not allow you to a step or debug any code inside that disconnected iPhone. Um, but all uh, Safari and and um, and Firefox they work just fine. They do allow you to continue debugging that just fine. Um, I believe it's because Chrome is doing some extra checks there in the depth tool to try to give you some sort of trace or some sort of URL or something, and this thing is disconnected. Um, so how do you so how do you disconnect the iframe without killing it? You just create the iframe, append it, and remove it before you get uh, you get access to the window, and then you remove it. You cache the reference to the window object. Oh, and that does not destroy. That does not destroy. It. Uh, it disconnects a bunch of internal things, but it holds operations only. It does not do anything with the intrinsics, and that's the important bit. The intrinsics work just fine. Um, are they removed from the global object? They are not removed from the global object. What about this duality in the browser? Uh, this weird thing about the window versus the window proxy. When you once you disconnect the iframe, do you also not need to worry about that? It's because it's stable. Uh, yeah, so far uh, we haven't encountered any. Uh, we're, again, we're talking about the intrinsic here. Um, and in, the, in terms of the disconnection process, the intrinsic has nothing to do with the proxy duality. So for us, that means that we don't need to worry about a, a, the user attempting to do evaluation with the, uh, whether that is direct eval or indirect eval with imports, it doesn't matter because if it, if it generates a network activity, the network activity will be automatically cut out because the, the iPhone is disconnected. Well, this so is basically fantastic. a sandbox in memory that does not talk to the outside world. It's just intrinsics available for you to use. And the same happens for, um, for example, when you try to go up to the top. The top is disconnected, so it returns null because yeah. you don't have a top. And um, so it's, it's pretty much this thing in memory that you cannot do much with it <coughs> other than run JavaScript code. This is fantastic. Yeah, well, I think we, we discussed this in the past with Dominic uh, or Daniel. And um, Daniel Ehrenberg? Yeah, in case, trying to find out if that environment was stable and there were at the time, some concern about the stability of, the, of a disconnected iframe what do you regarding mean by garbage stability? collection. Yeah. What, what do you mean by stability? Um, that the environment would be garbage collected somehow. And that's, and, and so at the time, that was it. But we knew. Yeah, it I mean, it's, it's, it's unstable from the point of view. For example, if you're trying to use the console log of the iframe, obviously, the console log will throw saying this is disconnected, whatever, whatever the yeah, error is, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But we don't. But the console log is not an it's not an intrinsic, so you cannot use that one. You have to eliminate all the intrinsic somehow. We eliminate them. We don't eliminate them. We remap them via the membrane that we have. But yeah. other than that, uh, the intrinsics are stable. There is nothing they can do to eliminate those intrinsics. So they sorry. cannot collect it or anything. One question about the console specifically and, and, and other, you know, not intrinsic things at this point. So if you retain the reference to the window object and uh, let's assume that window proxy stuff just is not connected, so it will not work, including console. But are you able to redefine console on the window object of that detached iframe? Um, in other words, can you rewire that global object to... Um, That's what we do. 
That's what we do. All okay. the things that are not intrinsic, we rewire them to the outer, uh, mm -hmm. outer, outer window. Yeah. Wow. This is question, uh, very, very interesting initialization uh, shortcut. Uh, now, you know, everything that is intrinsic remains. Everything that you don't want to do, everything else you can find, um, into the wired um, uh, architecture that you want to, you know, um, uh, give, you know, endow on, upon the um, namespace or the, sorry, the environment or, or realm or whatever. Yeah. Thank you. So I think that's, that's one of the breakthroughs that we, that we achieve. And uh, it seems that I, I haven't, uh, get to the point where we can really we haven't get to the point where we really validate that it, whether it is really stable or not from the garbage collector point of view um i mean i know that the intrinsics are there because we are running tests and everything is just fine um, um but is there is anything else especially we have to talk to implementers about yeah if they deprioritize then or do some special other things that we don't know we can we can talk to them um, yeah. will be yeah. I was going to ask: Is this spec? Is this spec behavior, um, or is this you just got lucky? Uh, it seems that the spec is detailing the detaching process. Oh. So the, the, the detaching process is very well documented. Um, so what they do when you remove the iframe and um, how they do it and such is well defined. So I don't see any any holes there on the W3C um, spec. But uh, other than that, I think uh, in retrospective, it makes sense that they are um, doing all these things with the DOM APIs and the host. And that's why I was saying this is really about the host and anything that touched the host behavior where you really disconnect the host and then you, you're sort of in a limbo state. But when it comes to the language, in 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 262 we don't have anything about uh anything specific about the host other than when we talk to the host for the imports and other things um so yeah i don't, I don't think we're lucky i think it's just the way it works we just didn't get to it uh, uh, before so the code that's running in this disconnected iframe um uh, the before you after you disconnect it, then the only way you can get new code to start running in the iframe is with an evaluator. Yeah, you do eval there. Yeah. Okay. You cannot do you cannot do a create a script tag. You cannot do any of that because that hits the network at the host level. Okay. And there's no way to uh, use the browser's support for modules to run module code in that iframe. No. Okay. Because uh, the only way you can get to the modules from an eval point of view is to call a, di a direct, uh, a, a, sorry, a, a, a dynamic import. The only way you can kick in the, the module system. Okay. Um, what if you, I'm just thinking out loud here, what if you started a module executing or that module imported or um, uh, other modules maybe after a, um, and um, and you did that before you disconnected the iframe. I think it fails as well because the module, the T, uh, 262 does not have any registry of the modules, any cache. The cache is on the host. Yeah. Um, and therefore, the host is disconnected, so it should fail to to try to access that. Uh, that, but but again, you cannot really perform an import, so you cannot hit that that call path, anyways. Okay, this is just fascinating. So from our, so I know you're not planning to use the eight magic lines, and you're not planning to do um, uh, fine grained protection domains within a root realm. Uh, we're still planning to do that. Uh, it sounds like on the browser, we could do assess uh, with the, with the eight magic lines of code. Uh, using this technique in order to suppress the um, dynamic eval, sorry, the dynamic import expression. Yep, I think okay. so. That's why I, I, I brought it up. And if okay. you want to explore, um, so let me get to the second breakthrough. 
but I think okay. that one is also important. Okay. Um, and it's somehow related to this. And in my, in my uh, I hope that it also um, uh, take your attention and maybe there is also a, 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 a way to just eliminate the A lines of code as well. Um, so let me go to the second part of it. And, uh, oh and, and again, we can, we can show you all this. this is, uh, we push the, the package, the experimental package to NPM, by the way, so you can start experimenting with it. Um, so the second breakthrough is about the identity of the objects. And I did mention it early on, I think in a meeting very briefly, but I want to go into the details of it. Um, the, the fact that there are certain objects that when you create an, an iframe, and in this case, the sandbox iframe, um, there are certain objects uh, whose identity cannot be um, replaced. But no, they, they, not identity, whose objects cannot be replaced with, values cannot be replaced with other values. And so those do, are, you mean, do you mean, for example, array.prototype, because every time you evaluate open square bracket, close square bracket, uh, it will reach the original, the original one, independent of what you might have done to the parties. Yes, that's an example of one of the language. But most important, those that are provided by the host. For example, uh, window the window, or window the document, or um, the uh, Windows underscore underscore proto underscore underscore. Um, there are certain things that. Uh, are marked as non-configurable, and therefore you don't have a way to eliminate them unless that you use the a, a ma magic lines of code to okay. shadow them somehow. Um, I believe the breakthrough on our side is that it does not matter um, what the identity of those objects are. You can still preserve the original identity of the objects. And so far, we have identified six of them. Um, and we can go over them. But it does not matter what the identity is. If you are able to change every bit of uh, uh, descriptors attached to those objects, and you are also able to take control over all the different APIs whose um, uh, all, these, all the different APIs that you can use to pass that out there as an argument or as the context. If you are able to control all that, it does not matter what the identity of that object is because you cannot do anything with them. Yeah, and when I say do anything, I mean do something um, that we could not uh, control. Okay, let me, let me see if I understand this. Um, so there's uh, six objects that by reachability, from, by non-configurable reachability from the global, you can't make those six objects unreachable. But the behavior associated with those six objects, none of those six objects presumably are themselves functions. Um, they're built in exotic objects and their behavior uh, is um, uh, uh, provoked by using built-in functions on them. And if you simply throw away all of those built-in functions, then uh, the objects become um, uh, paperweights. The objects just become completely useless because there's no longer any built-in functions that will do anything, and the object itself uh, none of it's, uh, presumably you have to freeze the object so that there's no funny property behavior, but you can do that. Um, uh, we're not doing any freezing, but I, I guess you could do freezing if you want. But, but yeah, this, this is very accurate, a uh, lot better uh, explanation of what I did. But uh, uh, they are, uh, there is one object that is very, very funny, which is the location object. Okay. Uh, whose uh, whose uh, descriptors are also not configurable functions that you can access out of it, and th those are not configurable. But uh, this is where it relates to the previous conversation: is that uh, the location specifically has a lot of host-specific behavior. 
And because the iPhone is disconnected, the hose is pretty much useless. The, the location is pretty much useless. You I cannot see. do anything with it. Um, so, be, so between the two techniques together, neither one by itself will take you all the way to safety, but everything that one technique misses, the other technique solves. Yeah, I would say they're complementary, yeah. But, um, um, complementary and together complete. Yeah, 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 I would say so, yes. Great. I think just the first one is good for isolation. Yep. I think the second one is for compatibility. I think what you, you explain, Kevin, if I, if I understand, is you can rebuild the location object by replacing the functions that are not, well, not working not the with location. something else? The, not the location. The location, we don't even touch it. I, I can show you the okay. for that. The location, we don't touch it because the, the bits out of the location are not configurable, um, so I cannot really replace them okay. and null them out. Okay. But because you're disconnected, they still do nothing. Uh, they okay. you, every time you call, them, it throws an error, so you don't really can have to. You cannot do anything. Some of them okay. throw throws an error. Some of them returns null, and they're unstable. Uh, okay. You know, like, so you take control of other methods of other object that uh, would depend would be sensitive to the difference of uh, object graph of. Uh, prototype uh, tree. Is that what you're saying? Can you repeat that? Um, you you mentioning that um, the, the, for the second part, um, there are there are some um, there are something related to identity discontinuity between the iframe and the outside world. Is that correct? I I don't think the the identity issue was about discontinuity. It was about uh, not being able to make the objects unreachable. Oh, okay. Yes, that's correct. Okay. That's correct, Mark. Yeah, yeah so it's okay. not, I'm not talking yet about how, how it touched the outer, outside okay. world. Um, so I think uh, is that uh, you, you're right, Jeff, in the sense that the, the first technique is for sandboxing. But even though you did the sandboxing and there is no, you cannot cause a side effect by hitting the network or something like that, you still have access to some objects that are phony objects in the sense that you, you could attempt to do some um, I mean, you have a DOM in the iframe. You can you can get the document and you try to do something with it. It might be even stable, might, but it might trick you to think that those objects are good enough. And right. maybe this part of the sandbox that you want is just simply not giving an access to any of these things. Right. Uh, okay. Or simply pipe those into the outer realm somehow, which is what right. we do. Um, so in the case of SES, maybe you do want to null them out, but there are certain six objects that you will not be able to null out. To null out, yeah. yeah. So you will be so, able to, so the, to yeah, delete, so to delete them, from the global. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, for, so, yeah. so from SES, uh, the, the, the real global, we're referring to it as the primal global. Uh, and what we do on an SES initialization is um, uh, we try to make it the case that uh, no SES code can ever access the primal global. Um, but uh, uh, if we, and, we, and we should still do that, but it sounds like by using these techniques, if there's a bug in our confinement such that there's some route by which SES code reaches the primal global, with your techniques, we can make that harmless. Yeah, but there, there's even more to that. Um, so the technique we want to use is we start with, with the route. The, what we call the primal realm. So we imagine this window. And we want to create an environment where we control everything. With the current technique of the eighth magic line, there is, uh, it's possible because we have to shadow every global with the, another variable that's faked as undefined. We break a lot of compatibility with uh, type of and, and, uh, and, uh, um, uh, uh, undefined, um, yeah, the, the error, um, right, that, that, reference right. error. Yeah. So if you're able instead to, to create that first compartment as an iframe where you can bleach out all of the properties you never want to see, therefore you restore the, uh, if, even if you keep the eight magic line of, line of code, uh, you still restore that, that uh, 
that behavior for that first compartment. For that first compartment. Okay. Yeah. Right. You still you still have the same problem with any, every other compartment. But you said but they're all in the same box, right? They all we are, if we all make them at the same level, they have the same outer realm. No, no, because each each compartment still has to have its own global. Yes. But oh, the oh. global that is the next scope is that bleached iframe. Oh, 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 oh. Can you have yeah, if that global is essentially empty. Yeah. I see. If that global is empty, then the has trap in the scope handler, scope <clears throat> proxy handler, can just talk about the proxy. It doesn't have to mask the global sitting behind the proxy. Correct. Wow. Yeah, that's something I wanted yep. to explore. So that's and this is a uh, it and, and um, this is why I was saying that maybe there is a uh, a lot of things that you could get out of this because. Yeah, you will still have some weird behavior. You, you have a, a global window, for example. You have a, a global document, um, a global location. Mm -hmm. But those, you know, the extra flavor that you have there that doesn't do anything, doesn't affect you, because you're going to do anything with them. You already wiped them out, but they are there. Uh, you cannot really remove them, and there is a... The new global object is a slightly different because it has a proper chain that cannot be um, really um, um, change it. As the proto chain is going to be Windows to uppercase window prototype to uppercase window pro properties to event target, but those things are wiped out. They are empty. It's, it's not the same as a 262 a specification where you have a very specific global yeah. object that is a more simple object you have a proto chain there but it's empty it's not harm harmless in any any yeah. in, in any any yeah. any instance so but so, it uh, reduces so thing, much the complexity of what we're doing that it, uh, it really worth it one thing we could do mark is still use the has trap to make undefined re be returned for window and document and stuff right. but for all the right. rest of the globals we wouldn't have to do that right we can mask those in the proxy handler. Yes. On, yeah. the, on the compartments, yes, you, you must. You must yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is, this is uh, uh, the congratulations. This really is a, a pair of breakthroughs that together make everything much safer and simpler. Can and you go then, through what the six are since it's just six? I, 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 you know, enumerating them during the meeting is probably worth it. Uh, let me share my screen here. So these are the examples that you you clone the repo. You can you can work on the examples. We have also a, an example that allow you to sort of a very similar to what we have in the shim in the past. Um, so the code itself. Um, there's a there's a global called Chrome. Uh, is that again? I'm sorry. No, this is this is my code. Uh, this is APIs, right? Uh, permissions and, and yeah. Uh, There's a global called Chrome. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't think it's available. If the dev environment is out, I don't know. I don't know if it's only when when it's uh, the dev tool is open. The I, I think they actually changed uh, the whole uh, like all browsers now have a global, and they use it um, for. Um, but you know, like uh, proposed um, uh, specs or things that they want to actually implement that will never be in the spec. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I, I think it's a permanent thing in a in a browsing context of the browser itself. Um, do you see my screen now? Uh, J JF, that's Kurdi's screen. We're looking yeah. at. Okay. Yes. Um, so this is um, this is the realm. Uh, um, the, our, our creation of a brand new realm on browsers. That's the one that prepares the iframe. So this one is the iframe creation. So this is uh, JD, JDD found different ways to 
some of the iframe and so it actually helps a little bit. And then um, we, we take the window out um, and this is the one of the hacks that you have to do to make the window really useful. And maybe that's why before we didn't encounter this or JDD found that if you execute code before removing the iPhone, you execute code uh, with the window reference there, that kicks in some process of making the global object useful. Oh my there is God. some sort of crash uh, there that is happening there. And How then, did you discover that? Ah, we tried many different things. Um, and then the removal is here right after. Now the window reference that you hold is a good reference. Otherwise, if you don't do this, it's not a good reference. Um, this is the a bug that I mentioned that we need to get resolved in Chrome. So the remove iframe is debuggable. Otherwise, it's just going to be really difficult. Okay. But so the even, the, even if, go ahead. The magic um, uh, happening on line 23. Yes where even though it looks like a line that has no effect, mm -hmm. uh, you're saying if you comment that out, everything breaks. Yeah. Uh, and that that's true across browsers? Yes. Is, that, is there something in the spec that no. explains that? No. No, okay. Uh, so um, the spec- JDD will have more information, but he's not around this week. Um, <laughs> does the spec explain the behavior when 23 is present, or does it explain the behavior no. when 23 is absent? Um, it does not say anything about that, as far as I can tell. Okay. Um, so then this is the bug that I mentioned. Uh, the, it's, it's not useful in the dev tool. But even okay. with this bug, we were able to take it. Uh, we will be able to use it because we could say, well, we don't remove it in development mode. So you're right. seeing all yeah. that stuff. And then in production, we really wipe it out. Yeah. Um, so like, we're, we're, we're confident that we can solve this because the other two browsers are doing the right thing. Okay. And, and I haven't tried a new edge. Um, I hope that the new edge doesn't have the same issue as well. So we'll see. Um, so those are uh, those are pretty much the, the, the creation of the iframe. And then from there, these are the sort of the, I call them offenders, although they're not really. Ah, okay. um, this is the proto chain of the window is immutable. You cannot really change that. that the, these four objects, you cannot really so the window is a global reference, so it is what it is. You, you don't have a control over creating it. Um, uppercase window prototype, uppercase window prototype, uh, properties prototype, and event target prototype. Those are the four objects. Does event target prototype inherit from object belt prototype? Yes. Is, uh, is that link severable? Yes. OK. Okay, so after cleaning everything up, it no longer points at object on prototype. Um, I have to double check that. We can double check it right here. Okay. Really, uh, event target, um, prototype. Um, so this is the one that we're looking for, and this one. Uh -huh. And um, so we can do, we can see if uh, so you want to wipe that out as well. You don't want that to be the case. Well, you, you have to maintain that. You have to maintain it, otherwise the window is not going to inherit from object prototype. Well, why do you care? Don't, don't you want window not to inherit from object prototype? Oh, window, window is a global object, global, global this. This is global this. Uh, global this as well. Okay, but I thought we were trying to bleach that. Um, no, right. In no. this case, no. In this case, no. No, you want to preserve that. That will be the case. You can say that you global this. That okay. Behave. okay, right. So this is yeah. This is a difference between what your what the, your purpose and our purpose. Yeah. For our purpose, um, we would still be using the eight magic lines of code to create the thing that the. SES code sees as the global, but then we would want to bleach the real global as much as possible. No, but, well, you, but we're saying that the eight lines of code, you were going to use it for the compartments. Yes. Not for, this is the primal realm. I, I was, 
I was planning that once you initialize SCS in a root realm, that um, you basically do all further execution inside compartments created by SES. You immediately get away. Since, yeah, I mean, historically, because we could not bleach the primal uh, globe, yeah. uh, we, had to get, we had to get away from uh, the primal global as quickly as possible. Um, so as soon as you were executing SES code, we were always, even in the initial compartment, it was still a compartment with its own uh, safe global that was distinct from the primal global. Yeah, he's, he, for him, this our primal and his primal is different. Right, right. He's actually using the, that's what I'm saying, the purposes are different. Yeah. For his but, purpose, he's actually making the primal global visible to application code as the global. Yeah. So he wants it to continue to have the things that are expected to be there. Yeah. Uh, for our purposes, we would just want to bleach it yeah. completely, including removing um, you know, all, even all the uh, SES uh, exactly. web hosting globals, objects and array and all that. Yeah, so as much as we can, yeah. Yeah, we just want to bleach it completely. So you wanted to then do uh, object that set prototype of this one set to null. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is in the window. So you, you can, do, you, you you can, can do it at the window itself. What? You can do it at, on the window, probably. No, no, no. You, the, the, uh, what I'm saying is that this proto chain is immutable. You cannot change. Oh, that it. one is immutable. Okay. Right. Whole is thing immutable is immutable. All, is it immutable all the way up to object dot prototype? Yes. You can. Okay. I try. I try to remove this one. Okay. And it's not possible. Yeah. Okay. So, so we can live with that. This is yeah. to. This is. I believe this is to preserve the fact that the window is always inheriting from object. Yeah. Yeah. I remember there was this. Uh, there was this security property that um, uh, the browser makers and W three C and and all that wanted to preserve that had to do with that had to do with reading JSON files using the script tag and that there was this threat that if you could modify the inheritance chain of the global, there was some very, very uh, convoluted threat that I remember Mozilla identified on a security bug thread, um, where if you could modify the inheritance chain above the global, you could do something weird. Uh, it was outside of any security concern that I have, but I think that was, if I recall correctly, that was the reason why they locked down the entire inheritance chain from the window up to object prototype. Um, I, yeah, um, but I, I bet that that's something, some, some, some of that that's causing these. So, well, anyway, so the proto chain here is immutable. Um, um, you have to go and try to do your yeah. best to either clean that up or pipe every yeah. property out of yeah. it to something yeah. else. Right, um, so we can, throw, we can throw out all of the properties on, well, uh, on, yeah. on, on that chain up to object prototype. Yes. So obviously we're not going to throw it. That's the genuine object prototype. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so what that means is that the object prototype to string remains a um, globally addressable to string inherited by window. So there's still this aliasing of the global to string variable name to the inherited to string property. Probably uh, we haven't get to that, but for us it doesn't matter because it's in the browser. We want that to see to be seen as a global window. But for you, you you're right. Maybe the two string here, even if you wipe it out, it gets some internal stuff. Yeah, and that's okay for us because once again, our proxy can mask that if we wanted it to. Mask. Yeah, it will. It will mask. It will mask it. So it's just not. Yeah. It will just reveal that it exists. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. So right. all the all this is basically dealing with this fact of the proper chain and then picking up the pieces and doing some remapping for the yeah. membranes. So this all this code is just membrane specific uh, uh, for us to do the remapping and then um, four offenders um, that we simply um, are okay with eliminating yeah. them. Um, uh, eliminating them means when I see delete, when I do delete here, I'm deleting from a descriptor map. So I'm not trying to take control over those inside the iframe, basically. But these are these three are the same that we have in here. So really, is this four, uh, this 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 four objects here, window, window, window pro properties, and event target plus location. Um, so those are five of them, and then uh, um, the those are pretty much the ones that we that we have issues with. The rest, you don't have a, you don't have top. Top is null out automatically. It's null. Okay, top is null. Okay. Yeah. So you 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 will not be able to remove it, and it's going to be null for you. Okay. Um, and Chrome, right? Uh, Chrome, I I believe is also null out automatically when once you disconnect it. We can try it out here. So you're saying uh, you want to do sort of a console log uh, Chrome like this. Um, so this one is pointing to the Chrome of the outer realm. So that's why in, in our case, so we, we were able to replace it. That's what it looks like. Let me see, uh, object uh, get on property descriptor of the global window.chrome. This one, uh, Jeff, are we looking at Kareti? That's Kareti. You want to see the uh, face on the side? Uh, okay, uh, Kareti, can you make a font much bigger? Uh, sure thing. Uh, here, a lot bigger, like this. Yes, thank you. So, when, when we run the um, let me see if I can get it to work in another example here. Thanks. We do log in, log something. Um, let's see, object lab, inspect. Um, I don't think we're logging this anymore. That would be interesting. Let me see here, info. Um, we have a, a console log somewhere that tells you what we're doing with all these uh, non-configurable objects. So I, I was hoping that we could use that, um, but I, I think uh, JD commented that out. Let me see. So can we mix this technique with Jasvir's technique for a simple Delmato where um, in a different iframe, we use CSP to turn off all evaluation and uh, turn off basically as much as we can, but we still have a DOM that can render and interact with the user and then take that DOM from the second iframe, make it accessible from, from the code in this iframe, uh, where this iframe, of course, does have evaluation, but doesn't have anything else. Um, and if we did that, would that still I didn't, I didn't quite get what you were saying there. I okay, so Jasvir, Jasvir had this technique for a simpler way to do D'Amato, um, uh, uh, where you, you create two iframes. Uh, one is the iframe that just gives you the DOM nodes, and the other iframe is the thing that uh, gives you code evaluation. You just keep those in two separate iframes. Mm -hmm. So the one that gives you code evaluation, what you want is nothing other than code evaluation, which I think you're for the first time achieving directly in the browser in a beautiful manner, uh, well, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a robust manner. Um, and then uh, the other iframe that's donating DOM nodes, the issue is suppressing all behavior of the DOM nodes for causing evaluation and for causing uh, remote IF, for causing network traffic. Um, uh, which, so, you, so uh, CSP can certainly suppress 
uh, but, but you want to preserve the behavior that those DOM nodes are mapped onto the screen that the user sees so that, so that with the DOM nodes you can render to communicate with the user and likewise receive user interface events. So it becomes a, a boxed channel for interacting with the user, but not with the network and not with evaluation. Uh, so then the idea is you take the, um, the DOM nodes from the second iframe, make them available um, within the first iframe. Um, and especially if you have separate compartments in the first iframe, you can make different ones of those available in different compartments in the first iframe. And now you've got something you know, like the Kaha division of the screen real estate into separately permitted DOM trees all within one root realm in separate compartments. Right, that's very similar to what we do, or what we're doing right now. The difference is that um, the reason why Kaha or Domato in this case is probably doing the second iframe for the DOM because they don't want to mess with the rest of the DOM. Um, so you traverse that DOM that you do have access to, you don't have access to anything else. Well, I think um, that the main reason is that the, you, the DOM, uh, you need to suppress its ability to cause evaluation, but in the iframe you're using for code execution, you need to preserve evaluation. Right, right, right. Um, so what we do for that matter is that we, we, we use the membrane. And any operation that you're doing on the DOM, we, we, so first of all, we do not use the second iframe. We use the outer iframe, the outer, the outer window as the DOM. That, that's, um, still, that's still a separate, that's still a separate, um, I mean, still it's, separate. it's- Yeah, it's still separate, but the controls that we have, because we don't, we don't bleach it out. We don't, we don't eliminate all the network and everything that you could do there, because it's a real um, window that has the application running there. What we do is control anything that you might be doing inside a sandbox. Um, when you talk to one of those uh, DOM APIs, uh, we try to um, understand what you're doing by applying the proper distortion. Um, so if you're doing, for example, a create element um, and you're doing some uh, creation of an iPhone, uh, sorry, a script, and you're trying to put it somewhere. Well, we, we identify that and we do something else. Um, mm -hmm. So it's the distortion gives us the ability to understand, or at least give you give us the ability to see what you're trying to do with the DOM, and we what? replace those operations with. What do you do the, about assigning to inner HTML or or yeah, document? Yeah, we do sanitization there. So you're doing it. It's, the distortion is on the setter for INA HTML on okay. the an, an element or prototype. Um, okay. So that is a function. The setter is a function. We identify that function with the identity of it. We replace okay. it with a new one that give you um, the, the the proper sanitization and okay. that's sufficient. So it's a single distortion there. Okay. So, it, so, uh, so that so that all makes sense to me. It's it's it is much more like what Kaha itself was doing in the sense that to get it right, you have to have a detailed understanding of the semantics of the DOM. Yes, yeah. the distortion yeah. is the secret sauce. I would say yeah. where you have to define with those distortion very carefully. Um, the the two things that we did, or the thing that we did, um, and I was worry about it at the very beginning when we started this exercise was, well, we have multiple instances where we experts in this matter, um, by all means, <laughs> um, make mistakes of leaking objects that you should not have access to inside when we're doing all the preparation or when we're doing distortion. Um, and we have a few instances. I remember uh, some of the cleanup that we did in the machine was because of that we were leaking objects that we were not supposed to system mode object basically. Um, and what we did with the distortion is the distortion happens on the outer realm um, and is defined with objects of the outer realm. So when you are writing a distortion, you're doing it 
in the outer realm and the membrane will take care of uh, protecting that distortion as well. They're not only protecting yourself, uh, you, we are creating a distortion, but we also protect what you produce as a distortion. Just in case that you're leaking something that you're not supposed to leak, well, the distortion will take care of that. Um, I feel that that's important uh, because I remember having multiple, basically, you're not going, the distortion is not about giving you a proxy of the thing. It's about giving you a function of the function that you're disturbing. And once you give me that function, I will go and create the, the, the secure proxy for it and give it to the sandbox. Mm -hmm. You don't do that work. And I, I feel that we make a mistake before of giving you the ability to do that in the, in the, in the realm, in the, the realm team before. Too much power for the owner of the iframe, the owner of the realm to do the wrong thing, basically. And we eliminate that by not giving them the ability to do it. So well, let me make sure the, the, the dangerous ability that, we're, that we made the previous mistake of providing that you're no longer, that, that you're instead uh, preventing uh, is uh, corresponds to this uh, recent, recent crop of bugs that we had that you did not have um, that had to do with uh, in, uh, leakage between root realms, for example, through reflect.construct, that if you just never have uh, any unprotected um, direct access between root realms, then it's the, it's, it was all these subtle attacks on the boundary between root realms. Is that what you're referring to? Sort of. Let uh, me clarify. This is this is a piece of code. This is the distortion of a fetch. Okay. So whenever you try to access fetch from within the the, the, the sandbox, we will give you a new function, a function that whose role is to just console error and do nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, the function and the fetch they belong to the outer realm. They are part of the outer realm. They are, they are, their identity is from the outer realm. The distortion callback does not give you any specific information or even detail oh. about the sandbox that you're disturbing. And therefore, you don't make mistakes of putting things into that iframe. Oh. Uh, I do it at the level of the, of the outer iframe. And then once the sandbox who is calling this takes that function, it assumes that this is just a regular function from the outer realm, it's going to proxify that. Okay, let me, let me see if I can uh, uh, play that back in general membrane terms that are not specific to uh, inner and outer realms. Uh, you wanna, uh, we wanna create a, we know that, that computing between root realms is dangerous. Uh, we want to create membranes, but we want to create the membrane parameterized by a distortion. The distortion is user code. So user code, we don't want to give access to objects, to direct access to objects that are on both sides of the membrane. In other words, um, uh, let's say that we're going to name the two sides wet and dry. If the creator of the membrane is wet, then the distortions are wet. So we want to have the membrane interact with the distortion code such that the distortions themselves, even though they're executing in some sense inside the membrane rather than outside the membrane, uh, the distortions only see wet objects. And to do that, what that means is that when there's a, something's coming in from the dry side that needs to get distorted, the way you distort it is you first map it to the wet side, and then you take the result of the mapping, like this T here, and you feed that into the distortion. So the distortion is only going from wet to wet. Mm. Yes, so it's, it's the inverse of you are saying, but that's correct. The, the intent is, what, is what's correct, yeah. We, the distortion happens in what's one side of the fence, and uh, you you never have to deal with the fact that you you need to understand what object is what. So there's no problem with identity or anything. You just don't have the power to know 
what side of the fence you are. You are a distortion uh, in this side and you can only produce objects of this side and we will take care of it uh, later. So, so what was reversed in what I said? Reverse is that uh, the outer, the dry, um, the, so the dry is the outer realm, right? No. Uh, I was thinking the wet was the, 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 I was calling wet the one that created the membrane. Yeah, so the wet, uh, the, the, the wet is the no, one the that has the distortion. The, the wet creates the sandbox and controls the distortion of that sandbox. Yeah. Right, so wet, so, so wet would be the outer. Yes, so in this case, the distortion is all happening at the wet level. It's yeah. always on the wet side of things. And then when you finish that process of distorting a wet object into another wet object, you pass that into the membrane and the membrane will make the proxy out of it that is accessible into the dry area. So basically, this is just the attenuator. So this is, um, if he was not concerned about uh, different uh, identities, this would be fine. Does this it, is the distortion. And now the distortion, the distortion is passed to the membrane, which takes care of the identity discontinuity, which gives something else. Plus, probably uh, making sure there's no uh, writability, but the membrane is, is for uh, crossing routes. Uh, can you show me the code where you create the membrane, parameterizing it with the distortions? Uh, yeah, um, let me see. Here is the distortion. Uh, where is it? Uh, um, so I'm calling this function, okay. which in this case is the browser. I could do node here if I want. So it, I, basically, the, 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 the tool right now is divided, just for you to know. The tool is divided into the core of it, which is the environment. This is the one that does the membrane, the, run, the name is probably run. This is the one that controls the membrane alongside with the two proxy handlers. Um, and then that one is only about getting two global objects. You, you have to pass two global objects to it. And let me show the API. Yeah, it's actually a class. You create an instance of a class, um, this class, Secure Environment. And this option back has to be passed with these three things, the global, on the row side, the global mm -hmm. in the secure environment that you are taking control of, and the distortion callback, which mm -hmm. will probably change to a map, distortion map. But um, this core, the core of the library, which is very tiny, about 1.5K or something, it does not know how to create a ROM or any of that. It only cares about, you have to global objects, give it to me, I will allow you to control the communication between them via a membrane, and um, I will start with the intrinsics, and you will be able to add more flavor to it if you want to remap different objects from the different side of the membrane. Um, Why don't you need a distortion in each direction? You've got uh, we, talk, we talk about it. We talk about it. The distortion really works the in both ways, but uh, because if I ever get a object from within the sandbox and I wanted to pass it to the outer, um, um, to the outer realm, uh, the, the membrane will look for it and will try to, uh, it has an internal mapping already of what was already, if you, sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. If you have access to an object from the outer realm, uh, it's because you already have a mapping, it goes already, it went already through the membrane and we already have a mapping of what it corresponds to. And, and therefore, if you give it back to the, the, the membrane, the membrane will be able to rewind that and get the, the, the reference on the other end. Um, uh, we did not implement the dual distortion mechanism because uh, we feel that it's not really needed. Uh, we could look into it, but it feels that the creator is the one that is in control. And if we want to really do extra, um, mapping you could do the remapping by using the function called map uh, remap here it is a global function of the intents of the environment uh, map uh, remap uh, remap uh, you can call this one and you, you will tell what what is the object from the secure what is the object in the row they are mapped to each other so every time that it comes in you know what to correspond on the other end so it's just a a mapping. 
Um, I feel that this is sufficient, but we, we could look at it. If there is anything that you really need to do, we could, we could look at it. We just don't have anything that is needed there. Anyways. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What, what remap is a method of what? Remap is basically, remember when I showed this the first time that we have uh, two, a double, for performance reasons, we have a double uh, map or, or weak maps in this case. Oh, what we oh. call the secure to, yeah. to map and the road to map, where we have yeah. these two weak maps to understand what objects and what proxies correspond to what objects in both directions. So yeah. we're building that map, and then with these two maps, we are able to rewind anything that we need. So unwrap and wrap and do all these things. Um, that, that seems to be very sufficient for almost any distortion plus the distortion that you control in the outer realm um, seems to be sufficient, but if there is anything else, we, we could look at it. Um, so this is really the core of the of what we're doing. And then on top of that, you need the ability to create the sandbox. And we have two sandboxes, the browser one and the node one. Um, the browser one is the one that I was showing to you before uh, with all the hazard of the browser. Well, the node, the node is pretty clean. The node is just... <laughs> just creating a, a, a new context and evaluating the context, getting the global out of it, and just remapping the global object. There's nothing okay. else, um, sure. because there's nothing special in Node. Um, um, so you were saying you want to know, you want to see how, how the remaps work. What was the, the question before? I forgot. Well, mostly I was confused about even what object the remap was a method on. Mm, oh, on the on the um, on the environment that we create, so we create environment. We have the two globals already: the global disk, which is the raw global disk, and the secure one, which we take it out of the iframe. Okay, and then the weak maps are inside the environment object. And the weak map are inside, yeah, the the environment object. Yeah, those are okay. internal, private to it. And okay. and and now I, I I start my remapping by saying. Whenever you encounter a secure document, okay. Okay. it maps to the raw document. And whenever you encounter an event prototype, map to the event prototype of the other one. And these are the distortions that, not the distortion, the, the properties that we want to preserve or remap to the other properties. We could pass an empty here or just delete them all or whatever we want. To, um, so yeah, so that's, that's how this thing on uh, the fetch uh, was supposed to work. So the distortion will be called the first time that you're trying to get access to fetch from within the sandbox. And it calls that and you will be able to return a new function on the other mm -hmm. realm that does what the fetch is supposed to do. Um, and every time that you're attempting to um, send that property back to us via the membrane, we will be able to rewind that into, right. um, into this one, yeah. Okay, all of this code exists in a public GitHub repository? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and it's up to date? Yes. Great. And what GitHub repository is that? Um, name is a little bit misleading, but um, so it's on uh, this one. Great. And uh, the NPM package is, is an experimental package called um, Secure uh, JavaScript Sandbox. Okay, this is very good. And when you run the um, the local development, you you get a few examples uh, that you can play with, and there are some tests as well. But this is very still pr um, uh, pretty much work in progress. But so far, the results are, are really good, and the, the compilation of the browser version is three K, only three K, okay. and uh, for Node, it's two K. It's very, very tiny. Of course, the distortions are not here. Distortions are the secret sauce. <laughs> but uh, but it, it gives you the ability to do whatever distortion you want. Okay. 
for us, this uh, what I wanted to do is um, keep the iframe for the first level of um, compartment, bleach it, and because we don't have to execute any code in, in that naked iframe, we don't have to disconnect it. So if there's any issue with... Well, it sounds like with, with uh, if you don't disconnect it, you can't completely be bleach it because of top. Top is uh, remains there. Top is not deletable, it just becomes no. Well, only if you disconnect it, no? If you disconnect it, it becomes no, but it, what we care about is the presence. It's not the... Uh, is not the uh, that it's never accessible anyway. Okay. Right. Okay. So you're talking about the, just for fixing the uh, the um, undefined variable. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. So for that, you wouldn't need to disconnect it. Um, you don't. Yeah. You don't need to disconnect right. it. Right. But if you don't disconnect it, then we still have, you know, we still have the safety prop property. I mean, safety pr this hazard we've always had, which is if code escapes the eight magic lines into the underlying JavaScript, uh, then it could still climb up top. Uh, if we, given what Kariti just showed us, uh, we can go ahead and make the primal global harmless, just as belt and suspenders. So if yeah. any code escapes yeah, exactly. the eight magic lines, yeah. it can't do any damage. Yeah. Yeah, so the top is, uh, is still there, but it's not. Yeah, 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 so if, if you if you run it, 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 it's going to be null. If you run it in the other window, it's going to what be What about null. Chrome? Is there, is there anything problematic with Chrome? Chrome, no, because Chrome is really going to be, it's going to be there as an object that has identity, right? But uh, it's going to be a proxy um, to a, a, an object that doesn't have too many of the, uh, um, or is the the proxy handler um, doesn't have much there, you know. If in, uh, basically, if you do this object that uh, get uh, property descriptors out of um, window the Chrome, window Chrome uh, you look at then uh, all uh, all these are not well. Uh, the infinite one is not configurable. Not sure why. Um, all the other ones are configurable. Um, so I don't see any problem of wiping that out okay. entirely. Yeah, so that's infinite, sort of like, infinite yeah. is a little bit tricky. Why, why is infinite there? So on the global object itself, there are uh, by ECMAScript uh, three uh, yeah. immutable data properties, mm -hmm. uh, infinity man and minus infinity. No, no, infinity no. man and something. Oh, undefined. Undefined. undefined, undefined. Infinity man and undefined. Yeah, those are non, non random. Mm -hmm. Yep. All of the other ones, so you can delete them on the proxy, right? No, but those are fine. Those are intrinsic. Yeah, so the, you don't the, care. Yeah. The, those, those are completely fixed. They just, there's no reason to mess with them. Yeah. Um, but, but this one um, is. Uh, and, and, and it's very, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. So, then, then no, no, I'm not talking, I'm talking about this. Oh, oh, what we're looking at. I'm sorry. Specifically, I'm, what's what is on the Chrome itself? Okay. Now, if they are writable, they're yeah. probably deletable. Right. So we want to. We want to. Uh, but it depends on the behavior of the proxy. Yeah. So I love the. Did you come up? Just come up with this term bleach because I found. Yeah, I've used that for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of just having a generic bleaching utility yeah. that deletes. Everything deletable, yeah, and then you just see what's left, yeah. And if you delete all of the built in methods that could access the exotic um, uh, internal slots, then you've really made something harmless, yeah. Yeah, for example, so, if, if for example uh, so yeah, for example, yeah. this one because the, the window is disconnected, the iframe is disconnected. And I, if I do Chrome, the window it gets undefined, yeah. If I do it here. Oh, it's on the fine as well. I'm not sure what that is, but it's not configurable. That's the other one. Everything else is yeah. configurable. This top in there is probably a T2, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's that. that this so Chrome is weird. I don't know what yeah. this Chrome is. I, I, mean, I haven't really looked into the details of yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's something injected by uh, the environment. It's the, yeah, they have their own API for. If you do Chrome dot top. For yeah, it's it's mostly the done for plugins. So um, a, a lot of plugin behavior uh, hangs on uh, what what is provided by Chrome. Yeah. Yeah, but so. For us, like if we can bleach that too, if there's anything here that allows the I, I feel that I feel that I feel that because it's disconnected, it's already doing all this disconnection. Okay. Um, yeah. That's good. So I so I, I do think we should just build directly on top of this so that we have a yeah. harmless global that we build on top. Which is what I was I was suggesting today, like creating those attenuators that um, you need to pass them an environment in order to attenuate it instead of, hey, I'm attenuating date. Grab the current date from my current environment and make a new one that is safe. They, and they, they, so we don't have to do this two, we don't have to deal with two globals. We never have that situation. Right, and for, they, for us, we never have the situation. We, yeah. we, we never, have we're never trying to compute across globals except maybe with regard to the D'Amato case that's the because of the yeah. CSP is only applies well, to we do have two globals because when we build a template we have we, we still only have one primal global yeah. but we do have yeah we have compartment globals yeah. um, and we, we even for the, the the initial compartment, we want to use a safe global, not the platform global. Yeah. Because uh, the platform global, we just want to bleach it completely so that it's a backstop behind everything else. But uh, but yeah, when, when we try to create a date endowment, we would get it from the primal global before we bleach it. So Richard was asking something. So Richard, um, that code is almost okay, but it is missing the the hack in between. Um, is Which is hack? Missing the, the 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 call to eval with the window to get it ready before you remove it. Uh, so I think he missed the the part where we look at the at the creation of the iframe um, and his putting his home creation of the iPhone there, but the removal is happening before we get a window to be a real window, something like that. Um, um, so Mark, the, in terms of the bleaching process, is going to be very, very fast because it's going to be, you only need to bleach out uh, the global references, the, the global descriptors that uh, are configurable you bleach them out, um, is a lead, it just sift through them. And when yeah. you encounter one of them that is not configurable, then you have to go into the, um, you, have, you have to enter into, into the descriptors of that particular object and do the same there. Um, so it's a recursive, but only few of them are really doing that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine, I believe. Um, and, uh, and the prototype as well. You have to take care of the prototypes. If there is a custom prototype uh, that, uh, attached to one of these underscore underscore proto on one of these objects. Yep. Yep. And we already have an um, intelligent bleach with the whitelist. Yeah, the basically the whitelist with nothing on it is basically a well, no, the. Um, no, because what we well, can see, do is you, you can you, run you, the whitelist. You, you put on the whitelist exactly the things you don't expect to be able to remove, yeah. and you have nothing else. Yeah, we, the, we have that too in the code right now, which is uh, the intrinsics that we want to really not touch. Those, on, those ones will remain independent yeah. between okay, the different so, rows. So yeah, the whitelist mechanism we've got is perfect for that. Yeah. The so interesting thing is, yeah. we can turn things white. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Careful, we have to use all inclusive language. Good stuff. All right, so nothing else from my side. Took a lot more. Yeah, it would be interesting to, to circle back with Dan, who had some uh, 
some concern at the time with disconnecting the iframe, but uh, if it seems to work, then uh, maybe it's going to be something we can push to to be officially supported. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do as well. Like we ask, um, first we open a few issues to try to see if they could make some of these configurable so we could remove them all, uh, especially top. Right. Um, but that didn't go too far. There are a few things there that seem to be problematic, but they're still trying to, still trying to remove that, but, um, um, uh, the same for window circular reference and all that, but I don't think those will get very far away, to be honest. Um, we'll see. Um, and trying to see if we could get to the point where there is a new sandbox configuration for iFriends that can give us this out of the box uh, without having to maybe even attach it to the DOM or whatever. Uh -huh. So with regard to when we write uh, CES code using JavaScript module syntax, you know, uh, ECMAScript module syntax. Uh, we would, st in order to run code that uses module syntax uh, uh, safely within CES, we still have to do what we think we have to do, which is, uh, I mean, what our current plan is, which is we have to rewrite the, the modules into a valuable script because the only mechanism that we're left with is evaluating valuable scripts. Mm -hmm. yep. Does, is there any, I mean, which is, which is all a shame because the browser itself now understands module syntax. Is there any possibility that some variation of all this could enable us to execute module syntax while intercepting all imports, inter, you know, um, I mean, is there, is there any, it would, it would yes, be nice there is. There, yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, <laughs> is the ROM proposal and the evaluator proposal. Okay. Okay. Yes. Here's Good point. Good Here's point. Another, uh, another possible thing to explore. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I think um, if you import a module before you remove the frame, so if, if you have modules in the map, I believe they might remain in the module map after the, the, the iframe loses the ability to import uh, over network. Because if it's in the cache, it doesn't hit the network. But obviously, that does not work if you want to start um, uh, you know, adding a fragment or a query to your, uh, with dynamic imports. I so don't think it will work. Uh, we talk about it. Uh, I don't think it will work. Because in order, the map is not in 262. The map is on the host. Uh, and therefore, whenever you try to do, for, there are two problems with that. First is that you have to run the import, dynamic import, in order to get into. So it doesn't matter what we do before. When we give it to you, the sandbox, you have to call import to get a, a, a module. And you're saying, if that module is already resolved, that import should resolve fine. But if you look into the specification of the dynamic import, the first thing that it does is going into the host asking for that. Uh, there's no internal cache on the on, on ECMAScript. So, and when uh, goes to, sorry, so that's what the spec says. Uh, do you know what the browsers actually do? No, but we could test it. I mean, we could test okay. it. It's not, the, it's, not, it's not super weird to test it. Uh, um, yeah, it's going to take a while for me to write that, but uh, okay. it's, it's supposed to, I, I, I will test it today. I'll test it for sure today. Uh, I don't think it will work. Um, okay. I mean, we, the, the reason why I don't think it will work is because we were very, when, when we were talking about discussing the details of the, of the uh, module system of many years ago, we were very keen on not keeping any registry on ECMAScript. Just let that to happen somewhere else in, in the host. Yeah. Whether that's a mistake or not, I don't know. But <laughs> many times the caching layer happens to uh, come back into the conversation because we wanted to do this or that or the circular dependencies and that. We always figure to put it somewhere else 
And, but, um, you're, but you're speaking about the spec. Yes, it's different from implementation. I get that, yeah. but yeah. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. This puts me very much in mind of the old uh, MS-DOS uh, terminate and stay ready um, feature, oh, uh, which itself had as its origin a um, an operating system implementation bug, which people exploited and which they then had to codify. Um, okay. And this this has kind of the same vibe to it. Um, and I think this is one of this that that the phenomena that Critty has experienced feel like. Basically, what he's encountered is an implementation artifact that represents some path of least resistance in implementation space um, that that resulted in this outcome, even though nobody in particular intended it. And I would say it's probably pretty important to get it codified in perhaps the, the relevant W3C spec, um, lest somebody find some other browser implementation trick that suddenly made it go away. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's like the uh, this uh, we talked about that yesterday. The this hack around window application, which can be used to create a synchronous uh, clone or, or um, deep clone of an object, uh, which was never intended to be used, but happens to be working in our browsers currently. Remind me what that is. So you you can uh, you can save a copy of your current window of application, and then any object that you pass to it, you will obtain uh, a, uh, a uh, basically a structured clone, a clone of it, and uh, then you, you can uh, uh, and you can do that synchronously. You don't have to uh, do a, a post message to yourself and on the window in order to obtain that. All right, Fox, I have to go, but um, I hope that you get a chance to look at the code and I'll look into the import and send an email or maybe something else, some other channel to maybe yeah. just open an issue and um, in the in the, in the the repo and track it there just to double check. But other than that, yeah, see you Great. guys. And oh, Great. before I go, Mark, do we want to do anything uh, for the next meeting because the deadline is approaching for the right. When, when you talk about the, the putting something on the agenda, yes, for stage advancement. What is the so deadline? What the stage? I don't think we have any stage on, uh, uh, updates, okay. but uh, maybe so. Some technically, of these... yeah. Technically, as I understand it, the deadline is only a hard deadline for stage advancement. Anything where we just want to put it to, on the, on the agenda as something we want to discuss. It doesn't have to be before the deadline, but still I would say impolite to put it on after the deadline. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, 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 the topics, that are the, uh, not the topics. So I, I think from these exercise, we have identified uh, a few things that I believe are important. One of them is uh, we should really avoid adding to the language any API that keeps a, a reference to an object and read properties out of that object in the next turn. I think that's very important because it makes it really difficult to do any operation on the membrane. And the proxy is the only API that I have found that does that. Uh, but I don't know if in the DOM API there is any any of that. There's Hope no. Um, what were we talking about this week? That's that's one thing. The other thing is that I try to not add anything that is not configurable, and maybe influence a little bit the host uh, implemented or implementers to not really do any of this. I know that, for example, <laughs> uh, trusted types are going to be all not configurable, yeah. and uh, at least are spec as not configurable. Um, they call them, that was the term that they use, uh, they are not uh, um, global objects that are not, uh, what's the term, oh my God, like you could not change, you could not change them. Um, 
Okay. The reasons so, why, I don't know. Uh, I suspect that it's just a very basic protection system, but I don't think that protection system is takes it very far. Yeah. So there was this old, uh, ill-conceived proposal from Dominic a while back to have this whole copy of the entire intrinsics. Get originals? Get originals, get yeah. originals. Is but I think that one can be tamed because it's uh, it's the... It can be tamed with the eight magic lines, as can yeah. uh, the, the... But it can be removed from the global, I thought, no? No, okay. no, no, no. Uh, oh, Dom, really? Not, not in, as Dominic originally expected. Oh. Um, uh, the, I mean... Um, yeah. So... So the, I mean, I didn't worry about it too much because the, the eight magic lines means that we can mask anything, including trusted types. Yes. Uh, but uh, what, with what Caridi just showed us, it's very attractive that for coarse grain protection domains where you don't want to freeze the primordials to just being able to use an entire root realm uh, a bleached iframe as a coarse grain protection domain, and yeah. for those, yeah. you you would you know, it's these non-configurable powerful things that would be the thing that the showstoppers against skipping the magic the magic eight lines yeah. of code. Yeah, and, it's and it's, a, it's interesting because very often when something is proposed about, like you you say, Kerry, um, you want a certain um, a certain statement or a certain government to, to make sure that anything new introduced in the language or, 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 or accessible uh, by uh, introduced by the, the, the host cannot meet a certain set of properties, which is, um, and we very often struggle with that because uh, we, so very often the, the, the statement is that the web is, has a certain security model and we try to introduce a different one. So this is uh, this is very interesting that we we converge on, on that need to have a specification about uh, um, ergonomics or properties of these new introductions. And I I plan to write uh, some examples and write some something about the trusted types uh, issue because I believe um, even though the identity can I don't I don't remember the term that they use in the spec for that uh, like it's not. Uh, the, the the scripter is not is not configurable, but they call it um, whatever. Um, I believe the qualities that we discussed before that even though the identity of that object uh, remains the same, because you can peel out any details of it by changing the the, the, the descriptors and all the APIs that you can pass this trusted type too we'll be able to um, pretty much reuse it in the, in the, in the browser environment uh, because we cannot really allow the user to, as we do with the location, to really talk to the trusted type um, yeah. because the iPhone is disconnected and therefore the trusted type has a host dependency that will fail. Yeah. So, so you really have to replace all the pieces of it. Okay, so why don't we just make the following proposal? Uh, I'm not saying this should be the only thing for trying to, that we're trying to get in under the deadline, but why don't we go ahead and actually make the, a proposal um, that, that mandates that any property added by the host that's outside the ECMAScript spec uh, be added non-configurable and then acknowledge that there's an existing grandfathered in six magic property names, but just state normatively in the ECMAScript spec that all properties added by the host must be added configurable and deletable. Well, yeah. there's a, a lot more strong that I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking for um, get people to understand that this is a problem and uh, get them to uh, agree that we have this issue, we have the grandfather insurer, but we have this issue. <laughs> but saying that they cannot do it, it's going to 
maybe trickle some people. Well, Dominic is not around, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, su I suspect what might happen anyway uh, is that uh, one of the browser makers, in particular, I'm thinking of, uh, of you know, Google, uh, that one of the browser makers might just veto it, but making it a proposal and bringing the argument to the floor does cement home that there's a problem here and we want to encourage people not to do it even if we don't get it as a normative proposal. Well, the, the, here, here's the thing, Mark. Um, in theory, there is, at least in my mind, there is not a problem for those uh, things to be non-configurable. The problem is that sometimes we either need to polyfill something or we need to create a feature, or we need to do something where those are problematic, especially for the membrane. But they, these are problematic because we do not have the ROM. If we have the ROM, then who cares about it? Because we're going oh, to create the ROM, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. There is another place that it comes up, uh, but it's, it's quite different, which is the spec uh, has always had this very damaging loophole in it, which basically says hosts can add all sorts of extraneous properties to existing objects. Um, so, you know, you could, the, the host could just add, right now, the way the spec is written, if a particular host added a non-configurable peak and poke methods to the object constructor, you know, static peak and poke methods, for, for um, reading and writing arbitrary physical memory locations. Um, uh, it would render everything completely non-memory safe, but it wouldn't actually violate anything in the spec. Right. Um, so I've, I've, I've often fantasized about what is it we could write down such that there are, such that the spec is normatively stating uh, safety properties that host additions can't violate. Uh, but also that anything that any properties that hosts adds to the pro, to the primordial objects to the you know to the intrinsics other than the global, I would like everything added since the spec allows hosts to add those things. I would like everything that hosts add to the primordials to be mandated to be configurable and deletable. That we might get. Right, that one, yeah, I, I think so. But from there to the global object. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a, a little more tricky. Okay. So okay. There's a piece of this that I don't completely follow, which is there's a general principle which you articulated, which is don't do this. Um, <laughs> but the specific um, looming um, case has to do with people working on trusted types. Yes. Is that correct. So isn't one of the main movers and shakers there uh, Mike Sandler? Yes. Yes. And could, could you not explain this to him and get a sympathetic hearing? And then his voice might carry more weight with the people who just have their shorts in a twist about. Yeah, that's, the, that's what, the, that was my plan to, to do it in the repo and get Mike and talk to him, but he hasn't shown yeah. up here for a while. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Enthusiastic th thumbs up to that plan. Um, <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike Samuel is great and he thoroughly understands the object capability concerns. Right. And I, I just like the idea of, uh, um, you know, one of the sources of advocacy for not making this particular state mistake coming from a different vector. Mm -hmm. And even even the, the, the proxy itself, the proxy handler, um, which we have discussed a few times, whether that was a mistake or not, I'm not sure. Um, but what, the, whether what was a mistake? The, the the proxy handler that the proxy itself that holds a reference to a handler and then access that over time um that makes it uh very difficult so for this but i can explain the details of it if you want now oh, oh this is the uh, thing about whether the proxy should extract the methods on con yeah, yeah, construction yeah, time. Right. yeah 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 okay. and um, right. and uh yeah. i i feel that uh for this particular case it's very rare that you to, to get into a problem with this, you have to have a handler owned by a sandbox and the proxy intents owned by the other side. 
uh, and then you might have an issue there. Um, but that's very rare. Um, and so it's not really affecting us. Uh, and right now what happened is if you do that, well, the proxy handler is not going to be live. It's going to be uh, frozen in time. You, you, you're not going to get the new properties or traps or whatever. Uh, so it's not really the end of the world. Many people don't even know that this exists. Um, but I feel that uh, be careful about new functionality that holds reference to objects and then read properties out of those objects. It's probably something that we should uh, put it somewhere in the list of checks that we want to do when introducing new things with the language. And I don't know about the DOM. I hope that the DOM doesn't have many of those, but I'm sure that there is something somewhere. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that was a fight many, many, many years ago that, that we won is when we wrote down the object invariance, uh, we mandated in the ECMAScript spec that all objects observable from JavaScript must obey the invariance. And that means that if a DOM object or any host object violates the invariance, then they're violating the ECMAScript spec. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah. And the, the browser makers, uh, for you know, reasons we understand, wanted a complete blank check to have the host objects do whatever they wanted to do without being constrained by the ECMAScript spec. Yeah. Yeah, we have a sense of that. Well, yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, Kriti, uh, other things you think we should put on the agenda? The two big things, of course, uh, to put on the agenda are Realms and Cess. Yeah, we can give an update. I feel that uh, I didn't get the chance to work on any of these, but at the same time, um, uh, we haven't. I haven't get any information about the evaluator. I haven't get a chance to look at the evaluator yet. But uh, do you have any spec, anything that re resembles the spec or something that we can? Start getting. I need to get my mental we, model. We can, we can I, get yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. If I we don't just, get my uh, mental model, there's not much I can do. Uh, right. Right. We, I think we have we have talked about well, uh, well, simplifications of the realm proposal to just create a realm and the, all the other yeah. things we'll do it in the evaluator. That right. I think that itself helps to unblock the realm right. by saying what we have in the spec is pretty close to what we want. Let's iron that out. Go for it at some point for stage yeah. three, um, without the controls of the module system because that goes into the evaluator, right? Um, uh, right. So right. I feel that we could, and and in fact, all these things that we're doing, if we have the realm only, even if we don't have the evaluator, if we just have the realm to create intrinsics, is already a huge step forward. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so let's go ahead and put both of those on the agenda as discussion topics. Uh, since we don't have a spec written down yet, um, uh, I think we, it, it, you know, we're certainly not ready to have enough written down before the deadline to ask for stage advancement at the meeting. But if we just want to give a status update and discuss issues, then if what we have written down is written down after the deadline, I think all of that's kosher. Okay. So, um, uh, so how about we'll take care of the evaluator and assess from our side and you take care of the realms from your side? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, um, I'll, I'll add it. Um, don't, so then let's take more time on maybe upcoming meetings to debate this uh, issue with the hose, non configurable stuff like that. So we'll, we'll okay. take more time that. I, I think because of the, you know, the, the simple proposal that's likely to get blocked is simple. I think I will try to write it up and put it on the agenda before the deadline. Okay. Uh, very yeah, I plan, I plan to be there in the meeting in person so this time, but we'll see. Yeah. I just looked, by the way, it's November 23rd. The deadline? Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Wow. 
I figured it was like the next few days or something. Uh, yeah, the end of next week. Or wow, something. that's a lot uh, of in that case, In that case, I would like to encourage both teams um, to actually have a draft spec by the deadline, in which case we can could you, decide before the deadline to ask for state events. So can you, can, can you, can, can, uh, some of you spend time looking at the current specification of the Realm API and see if there's anything there weird or missing that I can work on. Uh, you have a better mental model of how that works with the evaluator. Um, so it will be interesting to look at it and see if there's anything that we need to add or remove. Super. Um, okay, great. Yeah. With the simplification. And then yeah. I, I, I'll have some time to work on it. Okay, right. so next, I propose next meeting, next CES meeting, uh, that we all have some draft spec text for uh, both so, from both sides uh, to talk about uh, next CES meeting. Okay, that works. Great. Right. All right. All right, guys. Bye. Thanks. Yeah. That was fantastic. Great. Yeah, so that invariant would be very interesting to protect. Yeah, I think we're, it looks like we're still on. We're still on, yeah. Oh. Are we supposed to disconnect? Or? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just taking that to be a meeting adjourned. But, but yeah. We, we Does didn't anybody change. have anything? Yeah, so, so we're still recording. We're still meeting. Yeah. I got I got nothing in particular, but okay. Um, we can adjourn. I never mind adjourning early. All right. And this was a very very fulfilling. Meeting. Yeah. Yeah, it was very very cool. Did I stop the recording? Thank Sorry? you. All right. I guess oh, we stop the recording. Yes. Yes. Stop the recording. Yeah. Go ahead.